Matthew chapter 21 and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage so he, he, he's blind men going to Jerusalem and he stops onto the Mount of Olives then sent Jesus to his dis two disciples uh, Mount of Olives just east of Jerusalem Zechariah 14 4 saying unto them go into the village over against you and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her loose them and bring them unto me now when you study the Gospels in Luke you find out that Jesus sends disciples out but right here he sends to his disciples head a lot of the, the cities towns and all that knew Jesus was coming because he already sent men ahead of him like John the Baptist was sent and he sends these two men he says listen there's a colt go get her if any man say unto you ye shall say the Lord has need of them straightway he will send them uh, <clears throat> all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying I got Isaiah 62 11 Zechariah 9 4 tell ye the daughter of Zion behold thy king capital K that's not church nowhere is Jesus called a king of the church he's a savior cometh unto the, the meek notice what was it that Mordecai rode on he rode on a king's horse didn't he here Jesus is coming on a donkey stubborn animal this one hasn't even been broken Jesus gets on this donkey and it don't give no heart that okay Lord let's go remember another donkey that gave heed to God it would be just funny if that if those two donkeys were related in some way. Just thinking. I always think those kind of things. The meek and sitting upon an ass. Well, great military leaders are picturing horses. And a colt. Zechariah 9 19. The foal of an ass. So there's two of them. There's a mother donkey and her colt. You see that in the pictures? Or do you see just one? And that's another prophecy of the first ad advent of Jesus Christ. Riding in on the ass into Jerusalem. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the ass and the colt. And put on them their clothes. And they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. They're laying them on the ground. Uh, I'm just reading here. No. And the multitudes that went before and that followed. He's got people all around him. Cried saying, Hosanna, save us now. From who? The Roman government. King, give us our kingdom, give us our land. Now, to the son of David, King, the throne of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. That's it? That's all he is? He's not the Son of God? He's not God? He's not your king? Verse 5. So you see, the people have already not taken Jesus who he was. It's just a prophet. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple 
and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. He's cleansing. 26, 28, 1 John 1, 7, Revelation 1, 5. He walks in that temple wearing one of those bands. What would I do? Kick it over everything. Make it a, just a commotion. Get those birds out of here. Opens up the cages, slams in there. They go flying off. The money goes rolling across the floor. Two Jews grab a penny and make a copper wire. That's funny. This is an angry Jesus with a cause. They're not supposed to be making business in the house of the Lord. And even churches today, you go in, you got the, you got the cafe, you got the coffee, you got the books, you got the tapes, you get. You know what Jesus would do? Kick it all over. And said unto them, "It is written." Oh, he quotes the Bible. My house, Isaiah 56, 7, shall be called the house of prayer. But ye, Jeremiah 7, 11, ye have made it a den of thieves. What were they doing? What was so bad? They were cheating the people. The goods of verse 12 was all of robbery and thieves. See, they weren't helping the people. They were taking advantage of the people. I mean, I can see you having a booth somewhere. All right, if you need a set. The Bible says if your journey was too far to Jerusalem, take what you have, sell it, bind your money up, and then go to Jerusalem and buy what you need. That's Listen, if a guy has it doves for sale, because a dove is, is an offering. And he's selling it at a proper good price that would bring your sacrifice to God. Oh well, that'd be nice. But since it's a holiday weekend, we're going to raise the gas prices up more because people are going to come. We're going to raise the hotel rates up because here comes the tourists. And Jesus says, you're thieves. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple. Ooh. Desecrating the temple, the blind and the lame. And he healed them. This is the last healing. No one else is healed. My house will be called a prayer 22 38, John 2 16, Jeremiah 7 11, Mark 11 7, Luke 19 46. He's had it with the nation of Israel. And when the chief priests, uh-oh, they sought to kill Jesus, Luke 19, 47. And the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did. What's the wonderful thing? See that coin going rolling down? Did you see that cow running through the temple? Had an accident in a couple places? Did you see that broken chair over there? You see that guy wiping the dirt off his face? You see the guy trying to get his doves back? You see the one trying to get his money? There it is. That's true. That's true. Yeah, the ear, the ear being healed. I guess you would probably say this is the last public healing. Well, even then, there was people around. That's a note that's wrong. And when the chief priests and the scribes, so, listen, they've already rejected Jesus Christ. We're going to see it in a moment. Saw the wonderful things that he did. It was a wonder that Jesus walked in that temple and made that commotion. You know what happened? If, if you were to go in, a, in your, your, church, your Baptist church today and they're having this kind of thing, selling stuff like that, if you went in and kicked over the tables and knocked over the money, and the, and the, you'd be a wonder. And yet you'd be biblical. And the children crying in the temple. I wonder what kind of crying is it? I mean, is it crying? Ah, ah. Stop it! Stop it, Jesus! I don't know. Saying, Hosanna! Oh, that's what the children are crying. Lord, save us! The Pharisees, the scribes, and the religious idiots are, are blasting through the ground, and the people are shouting about Jesus Christ. 
and Jesus Christ is getting the praise while all the thieves are trying to get their goods and money back. To the son of David, they're still shouting it. They've been shouting it before he entered the city. He is in the temple, and they're still shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Now, if that's not angering the, the scribes and the Pharisees, what isn't? They're not getting the luxuries. Remember King Saul? David slew his thousand, and, and Saul slew his, whatever it was. That angered King Saul. To, to how many years did he chase David? Envy, pride. They were sore displeased. They're worshiping him and not me. And said unto him, Hearest thou what they say? And Jesus said unto him, Yea, have you never read? <laughs> He's talking to the people who are in charge of the book, the scribes. They write the words. They copy the words. They are very elegant about recopying the words of God properly. Have you not read? Don't you just love Jesus? And L. Psalms 8 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected for the little ones. As you become as a little child, suffer the little children to come unto me. Be childlike. That's why the Bible says, Be ye born again. Start it over again. And then he left them. He he quotes from the Bible after they have you not read and then leaves them. And went out of the city unto Bethany. And he lodged there. So he leaves the temple. Goes into Bethany. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, Jerusalem comes back. He hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way. He came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. Uh, fruit, fruitless and showy leaves. In Israel, buds late spring, June, it's full of leaves. A few weeks first, figs ready to pick. It's a little too early for this tree to have the figs. Uh, springtime too. Get the timing. Fig tree. He came to it and found nothing there. He knew it was. He knew it was there. But the fig tree is a type of Israel. He came to the fig tree. A type. Of, I, I see no fruit. You say, what about the multitude? Where are they going to cry a little bit later? Aren't they going to cry, crucify me, crucify me? Their heart's not in it. There's no fruit. Even the disciples don't get it. But leaves only said unto him, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the tree withered away. And this is the tree that Adam and Eve made the apron from self righteousness. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is this fig tree withered away? He's God. This is the same one that calmed the storm. This is the same one that took uh, loaves of bread and you picked up 12 baskets. This is the one that you've been living with for three and a half years and you still marvel at what God can do? They didn't get it, did they? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith, Ooh. and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now Jesus is going to do that the second advent. He's going to split that mountain of olives in two. So if you speak about someone, oh, I got much faith. All right, tell that mountain to, to split. See how much faith you got. That's what Jesus said. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. He's talking to the disciples. It's not church age doctrine. The apostles are going to, when they become apostles and go out in the book of Acts, Man, they're going to have all kinds of troubles, problems, and Jesus won't be with them anymore. They don't have a complete Bible. 
We've got something that Peter, James, and John, and Paul never had. We got something that Jesus never had. Six, 66 books complete. And when he was come into the temple again, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him, asking, uh, came unto him, and he, yeah, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. He walks in the temple and starts teaching and said, by what authority doest thou these things? Who gave thee this authority? Well, what are they questioning? In verse 12, when he came in there and knocked everything over. Who gave you the authority to do that, buddy? Now, who gives you the authority to come in here and start teaching the people? That's our job. Who do you think you are? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell him, tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Right, I'll answer your question, but I got a question first. Baptism of John. Whence was it? <clears throat> from heaven or man? And they reason among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did you not then believe him, John? But if we say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. No matter how we're going to answer this question, we're in trouble. If we answer it rightly, then he's going to say, well, why didn't you get baptized by John? They never got baptized. They just gave John a hard time. And we say, well, we don't believe it. These people are going to stone us. And they answered Jesus, saying, we cannot tell. That's kind of interesting. Because they knew the truth. They just didn't want to say it. They didn't want to look bad in front of the people. They didn't want to humble themselves. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do. Hasn't he been telling them all along, God the Father? But they're not listening. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my my vineyard. And he answered said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. Great illustration of what the word repented means. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm going to go and do. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And went not. That's rebellion and lying. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. They, this would be the Pharisees and them, said unto him, The first. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that publican, ew, publicans, remember them bad sinners? Look at Jesus sitting with those publicans and sinners. Ew, if he knew who they were, ew, he's not like us. You know, we're the crazy. You know. <laughs> and the harlots. Ooh. Go into the kingdom of God, spiritual kingdom, before you. He just told them they're not going into the kingdom. That's been promised to them by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes. You're not going in it. <coughs> but the sinners will. <coughs> but the sinners will. Because they believed on me. For John came unto you in the way of the righteousness. And ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye have seen it, repented not afterwards, that ye might believe him. They rejected John the Baptist. So Jesus has rejected them. How's that for salvation? How would you like to teach that in the church today? The church of, in order to go to heaven, you got to believe John the Baptist. That's what he just told the Pharisees out of the book of Matthew. And there's a bunch of men in, in, in Acts. They're going around preaching. Unless you've been baptized by John's baptism, you can't be saved, aren't they? And they're rebuked. 
because that's over because Jesus has died and has been buried and he's rose from the grave it's not John the Baptist no more right now it is so in order to be saved here and if you were to die which doesn't look like anybody dies during Jesus time, one of the things you had to be do to, to be saved in the life of Jesus you had to been baptized by John well, there was a period of time he couldn't baptize anymore. So, which would tell you, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Matthew, and all them were baptized. Because that is one of the three prerequisites of being an apostle. You had to be baptized of John's baptism. So, if Paul became an apostle, what did Paul do? He was baptized by John the Baptist. And you got to ask yourself, where is Paul during all this? This is his crew, the Pharisees. When you see Pharisees, that's who Paul was. Where is he? Well, we have no idea. But we do know. We do know that he was baptized at John's baptism. He saw the resurrected Christ on the road to, and that's another one. That you had to. And I forget what the third one was. So he did, he just told the Pharisees, because you rejected John, I'm rejecting you. How's that for a salvation? Here's another parable. Remember, he's speaking parables now because he doesn't want them to understand because they don't want to understand. Yeah, a believer's baptism. But to be an apostle, you have to be baptized by John's baptism. And that's laid out in Acts chapter 1 or 2. We'll see later, Lord willing. Here another parable. Isn't that funny how Jesus says it? Here another parable that you're not going to be able to understand. I'd be like me, like my grandpa growing up. Sometimes you just start speaking Polish to us. Oh, what are you saying, grandpa? There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about. Put a hedge. And dig the wine press in it. So here's a vineyard grapes. He puts a wine press and built a tower to you know keep lookout. And let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And when the, and that would be God, the householder. Jerusalem would be the vineyard. The the hedge would be the city walls. The tower, I think, the temple. And let it out to husbandmen. That's the Pharisees he's talking to. And the scribes. And when the time of fruit drew near. He sent his servants to the husbandmen. That they might receive the fruits of it. Grapes, raisin, wine. And the husband took his servants. These would be the prophets. And beat one. Go back and find out what prophets were beaten. And killed another. And stoned another. Hebrews 13. No. Hebrews 11. Speaks about men who were abused. Men who were killed. Men who were banished. And he sent other servants. More than the first. All the prophets are mentioned in the Bible. God sent. And they did unto them likewise. John ended up in prison. And killed. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. Did you see what God expected from these Pharisees? Did you get that? I bet you they call themselves reverend. And when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, this is the hair. Yes, it is. That's what Satan tried to get him to. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. Come, let us kill him. Is that what they've been planning all along? Let us seize on his inheritance. We want Jerusalem. We want the temple. There it is. Jesus is telling the thoughts and the motive of their heart right now. You don't think so? We'll read. And they caught him and cast him 
out of the vineyard, Hebrews 13, 12, and slew him. Who killed Jesus? Jesus just told you who killed him. These Pharisees. The debate's over. Yeah, I know he's God and you can't kill God, but what did he just say? Scripture buddies, they are charged with the murder of Jesus Christ. Remember old Jezebel signed Naboth death warrant and he told Elijah, hey, go Ahab and tell him you killed that guy. Remember uh, Joab and his brother there? Joab didn't get, well, his brother did and he got charged. You know, people try to make themselves all high authority with the scripture. With the, and you know what? Let's just read what the Bible says. Get your head out of the clouds. When the Lord thereof of the vineyard cometh, the Lord, wait a minute, there was a certain householder. We know it's God because look, he said, verse 37, but last of all, he sent unto them his son. Who's the son? All right. There's the son, Jesus. When the Lord therefore cometh to the vineyard, who's coming back in the second advent? But he said the Lord of the vineyard. That's God. So guess who Jesus has to be? He has to be God. Out of his own mouth. What yeah, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Would you like to be charged with the ones that had Jesus killed? And he said, remember Jesus said, Woe unto them that offenses come. Offenses must come, but woe unto him that does it. Do you think Judas had a bad spot in hell? These guys four times went to Herod, and after Herod said, This guy is innocent. You're going to crucify him. We're going to turn the heat on you. And these were God's ordained priests of the nation of Israel. The high priest here. He's the one that got to go in the Holy of Holy. No one else did. And he's in hell today. Can you imagine that? If you're talking about somebody who you would think of me in glory would be a high priest. And that guy is sitting in hell today. And then some people are going to tell oh, everybody will be saved. The ones that crucified Jesus Christ? They said, this is the Pharisees. They speak of, this is a parable they understood. They said, he will miserably destroy those wicked men. They just pronounced their own judgment. Isn't that great? Hi, judge. Send us to the electric chair. Oh, what did I say? God is so great. Not that these men get, but he got them. He, they described themselves, these, those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husband men. <laughs> We're gone. We're out of here. The, the, the apostles will get it with David in the 12 tribes of Israel, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons, the millennium. They just told you they're not going to be in the millennium. Someone else is going to get it. You want to talk about the Holy of Holies for these guys? Can you imagine the Holy of Holy when Jesus Christ is seated there? Jesus said unto them, Did he never read the scriptures? Yeah, he always did. did you not read the scriptures? It was their job to. That's like walking up to your pastor. Did you ever read the Bible? Many don't, but that's your job. You know, a pastor of a church is not to have a secular job. His job is to study the scriptures and learn the scriptures so that people can get it. Have you not read the scriptures? Imagine a woman preacher. Have you read the scriptures? Yeah, I read them. No, you haven't. Because you want to be where you are. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Have you read the scriptures? Yeah, I read them. No, you haven't. You haven't rightly divided. You haven't studied to show that self approved under God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Have you not read the scriptures? I wish I could remember that when some people come home to you're not doing it. Have you not read the scriptures? That's a good one. I hope I remember that. Uh, well, my eyes are getting bad. 
I know. I'm just. I got. I'm trying to find the cross reference here. I mean, these cross references are getting. Exodus 17:6, Acts 4:11. The stone which the builders rejected. Acts 1:9. Genesis 3:15. This is the Lord's doing. I'm doing what you guys are doing. Because I got to go to Calvary's tree. Remember, he kept on saying, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. He's, God already knew what their heart condition was going to do. He just used it like Pharaoh. He knew Pharaoh would never get right. But he gave Pharaoh chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. He's giving these guys chance. Isn't this parable of the household enough to say, You guys need to get right? He's giving them a free will. He's just warned. They just condemned their own self. They were thought to get, hey man, we're in trouble here. We're going to see this by the end of this, this chapter. They know they're in trouble. And they still don't repent. So God is going to use it for his honor and glory. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes, all of our eyes. It's marvelous that you guys have rejected me. And I'm the cornerstone. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God, that's not us. Now that's the, the spiritual kingdom. That's where the holiness is. That's where the angels are. That's where God is. God is a spirit. Shall be taken from you. That's damning words right there. And that's not go to hell. I don't know what is. Now you see, he didn't say you go to heaven. They don't look for heaven. They're looking for a physical kingdom, a piece of land called Israel. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, Gentiles, bringing forth the fruits thereof. I'm going. This is will go to the Gentiles. Verse 44 is removed by some Bibles. Whosoever shall fall on this stone, the one that you rejected, shall be broken. That matches Daniel's image that he interpreted for King Nebuchadnezzar. That final one, the stone was cut without hands. And smash that, that image into pieces and the powder. But on whomsoever, whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Looking up the note again, I can see. Get you Daniel's note. Daniel 2, 34, 35, and 45. You know what? Moses did to the golden calf he ground it to powder that's what God's gonna do to them so go dress up as a cow and, and have you get your free meal I guess people are so stupid today I'm a Christian and when the chief priest now watch this and the Pharisees chief priest these are the ones that go into the temple and do God's service these are the ones that are going to walk in and say, Who ripped that veil? Oh my Jehovah. I can see the ark. These are these men are going to see that that veil has been ripped. No one else is going to see it. John the Father's, I, I, I always forget his name. John the Father, John the Baptist's father freaked out when he saw an angel where the candlestick was. These are the ones that are going to see that veil rent in two. And heard his parables. They perceived that he spank of them. Yes, he did. And they condemned those and they repented and got right with God and are living happy. No, 46. But when they sought to lay hands on him, 
Go back to that parable of the householder. Verse 38. Let us seize upon his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out in the vineyard. And They just finished that parable. Caught him. They feared the multitude. Because it's not his time yet. Because they took him for a prophet. See, that's how the people only took Jesus. They didn't take him as the Messiah. They took him as a prophet. Remember he asked Peter one day, he the disciples, who men say I am? Jeremiah? Elias? Who said thou art the son of God? It wasn't the people. It was Peter. And Jesus told Peter, says, keep that quiet. Because they don't get it. As far as these Pharisees' chief priests, they just damned themselves. They This parable is told to those Pharisees and those priests. They condemned themselves. That was for to get them to repent and get right. And that's it. They didn't. There was opportunity. 